You know, I once believed that the world actually needed nuclear energy in order to, well, enable it to go to 100% renewables. That we still needed some nuclear. I don't anymore. In fact, nuclear energy and nuclear power stations are now really uneconomically feasible, especially when you compare the actual output per dollar in comparison to the world's latest offshore wind farm technology, which keeps on getting better and cheaper and better. Now I believe that offshore wind farms will consign nuclear to history. You know, when it comes to wind turbines, the bigger it is, the better it is. The bigger the turbine generally, the more power you're gonna get and the more efficient it will actually be. That's one of the key reasons why offshore wind farms and even onshore wind farms have become so much more economically viable because the size of the turbines has become insanely large. Now, developers worldwide are pushing to establish offshore wind farms all over the planet. And this is crucial. This is so important to the world. So important to our ability to go from fossil fuels to 100% renewable energy. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel on the Electric Viking. My name's Sam Evans and I'm coming to you from Melbourne in Australia. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back to everyone else. Thank you for tuning in and gotta say, thank you to our Patreon supporters and YouTube members. Great to have all of you. Really appreciate what you do. Also, if you'd like to join our Facebook group, I'll put a link in the description below. GE Renewable Energy on Friday said it's Halliade X wind turbine, the first 12 megawatt plus turbine built, has received a full type certificate for operations up to 14.7 megawatts from DNVGL, the world's largest independent certification body. This means it's the most powerful wind turbine in the world. Now this is quite a, an interesting race here because it's sort of like one company brings out the biggest, the most powerful wind turbine, and then a month later someone else beats them, and then someone else beats them, and then someone else beats them, constantly racing to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And if you'd seen the size of these things, that would blow your mind. They are so big. They're bigger than, literally bigger than a football field. This type certification, which follows earlier certification that the Halliad X could operate at up to 13.5 megawatts, provides independent verification that these turbines will operate safely, reliably, and according to design specifications, making the Halliad X the most powerful wind turbine with a full type certification according to GE. Now, there are some Chinese competitors which would probably argue that there's a bigger and better and more powerful, but they don't yet have this certification. As reported by Renew Economy, the offshore wind industry in late November marked a milestone when the world's most powerful turbine, a 16 megawatt giant from Goldwind and China Three Gorges, rolled off the production line in East China's Fuyan province. CTG boasted at the time that the annual output of just one of these turbines estimated to average over 66 million kilowatt hours and can meet the demand of 36,000 households, save 22,000 tons of coal and reduce 54,000 tons of CO2 every single year. And just think about that. If you had a community, let's say you lived in a town of 36,000 people. Realistically, if nobody had solar, you could simply run the entire town from one turbine. Now, yes, you would need some battery storage, probably four hours of storage, not a whole lot really. But the key point is, isn't it amazing to think how far we've come now that one single turbine can run an entire town of 36,000 people? So if you had a town of 360,000 people, it's a pretty big town, right? You'd only need 10 of them. That's not many. Now, like most towns around the world now, many people have solar panels. So if you added, say, 50% solar to the mix, You'd only need five of them. And the perfect thing is about that scenario, you'd be generating energy from the solar panels during the day. And of course, the wind blows harder at nighttime. It'd work out incredibly well. And that's the key reason why countries like Germany and Australia, they're saying they're going to hit more than 85% renewable energy by the year 2030. In fact, they're just two of many countries making those promises. Offshore wind farms are arguably one of the most attractive long-term renewable energy technologies currently available, particularly to countries short of available land, and is one of the technologies with the most potential to grow in capacity and generation. Now, to give you some context on that statement, Australia, we have a boatload of useless land. We have some good land, but we have, a, we have an enormous, probably about 70% of Australia is just useless, arid land, where, yeah, we can just put solar panels because there's nothing we can really do with it. It's a big, huge, basically a huge desert. And of course, on the fringes of the island, of the fringes of the country, we have green, 
land and farming land, but on the middle of the country, and in even many places that are not far from the coast, we just have desert. There's a lot of use here, massive amounts of use of solar panels on this land that isn't really usable. However, many companies, including even oil companies, are investing in wind generation and offshore, future offshore wind farms in Australia. That shows you how the actual viability of offshore wind makes such incredible economic sense now. And it's largely thanks to the enormous size of these wind turbines. Not only are they enormous, they're now much more efficient and they're also much less likely to break down. DNB forecasts see two terawatts of grid installed offshore wind capacity by 2050 with ongoing increases in turbine blade and tower size leading to improvements in the capacity factors. Now, if you look at the current trends, it's very likely these wind turbines by 2050 will double in size again, meaning that'd be almost too big to comprehend. However, one of them would then probably power close to 70,000 homes. In Australia, there are plans outlined for more than 60 gigawatts of offshore wind projects, assuming wind turbines of 20 megawatts or more in the future. But many of those aren't expected to be installed for a decade. The first use of the certification for GE will be the 3.6 gigawatt Dogger Bank wind farm in the UK, which will be the largest offshore wind farm in the world when it's completed. The certification can be used at up to 14.6 7 megawatts says renew economy and will be applicable for the 87 14 megawatt turbines that we used at dogger bank due to the enormity the site is being built in three consecutive phases the uk is actually the largest global player in offshore wind with a current installed base of nearly eight gigawatts enough electricity to power seven million homes and another seven gigawatts committed or under construction now put it this way right if australia had as much offshore wind as what the uk will have within the next few years a total of 15 gigawatts that would mean more than 60 percent of our population would have all the energy they needed all year just from the UK's future projected wind farms. In fact, not just projected, but the actual deals that they've signed. With a goal to increase offshore wind energy generation to at least 30 gigawatts by 2030, the UK is set to have enough wind generation to power all of Australia. Not that it would, of course, it's way too far away to send that power from the UK to Australia. But the point is just to give you some context on the incredible amount of offshore wind being installed in some places around the world. This means the UK is set to keep growing in offshore wind and more than 30 additional wind farms and related projects are already in planning or development. This will mean the UK will be a net exporter of energy by the end of the decade. Dogger Bank is a joint venture between Norwegian-based companies Equinor and Vagron and the UK's SSE Renewables. The full type certification gives customers confidence that the Halliad X has been designed, manufactured and tested in a manner consistent with internationally recognized standards. Vincent Schelling's Chief Technology Officer officer for offshore wind at GE Renewable Energy said in a statement. Offshore wind, it's actually one of the future real, you know, we're talking about constantly, right? Nuclear power, we're talking about the amazing potential of nuclear fusion, but really, The answer to the world's energy needs are much more simple. It's really just a mixture of offshore and onshore wind combined with solar and battery storage. It's actually all we need. It's been proven within the last few months that it's all we need. I'll tell you more about that in upcoming videos. Thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Bye-bye.